Hey, how are y'all doing this evening? Again, this is Pastor O'Reilly. Y'all know me, the associate pastor here at Treach of Serving Ministries, and you've just tuned in to Spill, which is once again 15 minutes with God. Tonight's theme is justice and peace. We got a special guest, a good friend of mine, guest, uh, Colonel Rich Crosley, right? So again, tmumc.org slash spill to listen to his full podcast, tmumc.org slash spill, Rich Crosley. All right. So tonight we're going to be talking about peace and justice and how this uh, young man um, has. Um, generous. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is his definition of peace and justice um, and how has he defined that um, uh, growing up um, and throughout his life of um uh, being a young man in Southwest Mississippi and going off to the military and um, just now where he is now um, as an older and seasoned gentleman in 2019, Peace and Justice. So, uh, Rich, we're, we're glad that you're here, sir. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how, so just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you're from, um, um, where you grew up, um, the era that was, and, uh, you know, family. All that, so. I grew up in southern Mississippi. Uh, okay. Actually, those out there would probably know Pike County, Mississippi. I okay. uh, grew up in the 60s, uh, 70s there, and uh, Jim Crow was alive and, and thriving in, in that part of the country. Uh, and I dealt with it uh, along with my siblings uh, and my parents and, and my neighbors. Uh, and, and from that experience, mm -hmm. it helped shape my values about fairness, justice, okay. and how I can make a difference. And okay. uh, uh, there's always things that we can improve on. Okay. Know? Now, now I know being being a um, being a, a, a let's say a Southern boy myself from Shreveport, Louisiana, just one state over, but um, didn't grow up there my whole life. Um, being a young man in Mississippi in the '60s, um, if you um, could go back in a time machine um, and you could go back as a seasoned gentleman as you are now, um, where did you see shining examples of peace and justice during that Jim Crow era? Because um, I know it wasn't a lot going on with the law, um, but were there any examples, any positive examples that you saw as a young man in that city and during that time you know Chris at first my understanding of mm -hmm. justice it is a virtue okay. that you uh, expect for yourself okay. that fairness okay that's justice right. and you demand it of others who you interact or you cross paths with okay. and so when I look back on where I grew up the one person I can look to it's my family members. Mm. We uh, shared uh, whatever we grew with others. You know, we expected to uh, have food, mm -hmm. and we shared it with others. Mm -hmm. And as I went to school, and there's others out there who would know, it was the one white teacher I had mm. uh, in high school mm. after desegregation, mm. Mm. Uh, Mrs. Jessie Denman. Mm. I thought she was prejudiced like a lot of others who I crossed path with. Mm -hmm. But she demanded uh, justice for all of her students mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that I was just as knowledgeable about the English as the rest of her students, the white students. Mm -hmm. I was the only black student in that class. Okay. So I saw justice there with my family and my teachers. Mm -hmm. And as far as peace, I think peace will come when we accept the grace mm. of our Savior. Amen. If, if you trust in that, you're going to have that in your heart, mm -hmm. and all of your interactions are going to reflect that. Okay. That is where the peace, justice, then the peace of accepting the grace of our Savior. Amen. Amen. So moving forward, being a young man in Pike County, um, Pike County. Mississippi, um, and um, matriculating through elementary school and middle school and high school, um, and then now getting ready to step out um, and become a man and, you know, see what life has to offer. Um, 
what were one your fears and two where did you see yourself going that's a good question. I, I mean, I, I had a lot of fears. I, mm -hmm. I even have fears now. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> As an old man. Uh, but my fear was that I was going to stay in that town mm -hmm. and to also suffer under Jim Crow limited uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. So at 19, I raised my hand and joined the military. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I saw that as a path to get better, mm -hmm. uh, get opportunities, because they were not there in the Piney Woods of Mississippi. Okay. Uh, and as I joined the military, I saw that there was those set of values uh, that the Army had. Okay. Okay. Loyalty, duty, integrity, mm -hmm. personal coverage. Mm -hmm. And those mm -hmm. things, uh, we did our duty mm -hmm. at growing up in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And so that gave me a framework and, and a regiment that I could now start reaching my potential, that possibility of becoming. Mm -hmm. And so I got out of the military, went back to college, mm -hmm. and took ROTC, mm. and, and went back and did 20 more, because there was a place that I could also show that a, a, a black man from Mississippi mm -hmm. could do the same thing as the rest of them. And I wanted to be a model for some of my friends, some of my family members mm -hmm. that regardless of what the society at the time said, mm -hmm. I was going to be that model. Okay. And I didn't know at the time, but my savior had a plan for me. Amen. And I've watched that throughout my career Amen. and even now. Amen. So I am doing things for him and not for Rich Crossley. Got you. So stepping into the military as a 19-year-old young man coming from Pike County, Mississippi, with um, uh, fear in one hand and um, a lot of energy and enthusiasm and adventure in the next, meshing those two together, going into basic training, um, and then stepping into active duty, um, what were your experiences with peace and justice then? And um, did you experience any negative things? Um, um, or, or did you experience positive things or just, just a little bit of both since it was still during the 60s? I would, you know, look at it. I had to look at it as what the unit required me to do. Okay. And that goes back to as I was able to reflect on uh, Ms. Denman. Mm -hmm. she said it was, I had seen so much prejudice and discrimination that I was put in that filter on every experience and I had to pull back from that mm -hmm. and in the military it's a unit it's a team mm -hmm. now sure a lot of them did not accept the values that the army has uh, for the team mm -hmm. but I put my effort into being the best soldier Amen. and that is recognized Amen. that is the one place in our society in our culture that the military which is not perfect mm -hmm. that you can advance based upon your talent your skills and the exam that you take. So mm -hmm. I saw that mm -hmm. and I pursued it. Okay. And I think I was rewarded by the assignments and the promotions. Mm -hmm. And so seeing that, my job is to ensure that for others who cross my path, mm -hmm. that they get justice and that peace in the sense of you are doing for others, mm -hmm. you know, serving others, mm -hmm. not just uh, and not the military peace. Mm -hmm. It is the peace that comes from accepting Christ and what he has for you to ensure Amen. peace on earth, especially Amen. as we come up on the Christmas season Amen. and Advent season. Amen. So um, as you, you know, were matriculating through the military and your experiences in college and then going back to the Army, um, what were, I don't want to ask this question, um, did you come in contact with individuals that challenged your understanding personally um, that you gandered from Mrs. Din Denman, Denman. Um, challenged your personal understanding of peace and justice and how did you handle that? Because I think a lot of the times we as individuals can define that for ourselves and then we're met with a challenge um, that pushes us into a corner and we have either 
we we can either react or we can respond, right? Yeah. We can respond in grace or we can react with anger and hostility, um, or we can respond with grace and do as, you know, what would Jesus do, right? So how did you respond in those moments with challenge, when you were met with challenge, with your understanding of peace and justice? Well, the, the, the first thing is the military has this set of mm -hmm. rules and regulations, mm -hmm. uniform code of military justice. Mm -hmm. And that was the guideline that I used. Okay. And the way I used that was that first they were individuals and they had families. Mm -hmm. I had to uphold the law and the regulations. Mm -hmm. But there were times when I would have to speak to the commander and know that it's not fair to do this because of this soldier who has a family uh, away. Mm -hmm. And so that is how I ensured that fairness, which I expected for myself. Amen. And uh, those who are out there in the military know that you have to stand up and speak for your soldiers mm -hmm. and that punishment, because justice is, is complex when you look at the legal system, mm -hmm. but it's very simple when you look at it on the playground mm -hmm. and with young kids. They know what fairness is. Mm -hmm. And so that is the time when, you know, even at the expense of uh, not getting a promotion mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or not getting that assignment, mm -hmm. you have to stand up. Mm -hmm. And that is your integrity and that personal courage mm -hmm. that you have to display. Right. And there's instances where I did that to ensure justice for my subordinates. Mm. You know, I'm reminded of that when, when you said that um, speaking up, even though you may not get that assignment or that promotion, reminds me um, when Dr. King would say, you got to speak truth to power, right, or, 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 or have that call to conscience. So my last question would be, um, now that you are an older gentleman, seasoned, um, and you are an ROTC direct director. director for how many schools? Uh, 15 schools. For, for 15 schools. How do you take your wisdom, um, knowledge, um, un understanding, wisdom of the sages, and apply it um, to your ROTC instructors and also to the cadets that you come across? Well, it goes back to uh, what I said growing up, mm -hmm. when there are laws mm -hmm. that have been sanctioned by the powers. Okay. Okay. And you know that th that is not what your value set yes. or your understanding mm -hmm. of the scripture. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing now is that the justice that growing up, I did not have the best education mm -hmm. or access to it. Mm -hmm. And so now, I can ensure with what I am uh, been tasked to manage mm -hmm. to ensure that the students that come across my path, mm -hmm. that they get a quality education, that they know that they can be successful because I think education is that cornerstone Amen. that you can now reach uh, your potential. Yes, and sir. that is how I see it as, in a sense, it's my calling. Amen. Uh, it's what I can do to ensure in education, uh, a quality education for young people. Yeah. And then they will reach their potential in the secular world, or, and if they accept the grace of Christ, mm -hmm. they're going to definitely do greater things. Right, and so, right. You know, I, I preached that this morning about the Imago Dei, which is Latin for um, the image of God and how we are made in the image of God. And I think you are a shining example of that, um, talking about how when Christ came into this world in John 1, 1 through 18, um, and the word became flesh, um, Christ came into this world to be a shining example of how we are supposed to live. And I think, um, uh, Colonel um, Crosley, um, um, that you are and have you you have been and you are still continuing to be the image of God and be that shining example of what it means to, to, to live out peace and justice in the world. Well, well I appreciate that. And yes, that sir. peace, that everlasting peace is going to come like over 2,000 years ago. Amen. Come in on, the Jordan hills of Bethlehem. Amen. When come the on. An angels were singing peace Amen. on earth. Peace on earth. But we still do justice mm -hmm. except that Grace and peace will reign throughout Amen. the world, regardless of one's ethnicity, color, race, language. Amen. 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 And, and I see my little part in doing that as I practice my faith. Amen.
Well, I want to thank you uh, again, um, Colonel Crosby, for being here. I want to thank y'all also for tuning in uh, to Spill, which is, again, 15 Minutes of God. Um, so while y'all are sitting back, just give him a, a hand clap. Uh, he did a great job, and we enjoy listening to his story and his history, right, as he continues to pontificate justice and peace in the world. Um, once again, tune in next week. Our theme will be grief. What does grief look like, and how do we handle it in this season? See y'all soon.